And now, your News 10 forecast first. Here's the live Doppler Storm Team, brought to you by your super Chevy dealers of Acadiana. Good morning, Acadiana. It's great to see you on this Thursday morning. It is now 6.30, the final half hour of Pop Spot 2. We're rolling right along here, getting closer to the weekend. I wish I had a better forecast for you, but... The same old weather continues. Not much of a change over the next week. This morning it's warm, it's muggy with some fog and some isolated rain. Not many areas seeing the rain this morning, though, as we head into the afternoon. That's when we start to see more scattered showers and storms. And it'll be hot and sticky again with those temperatures into the mid to upper 80s. We're going to look at radar here shortly. Your news is starting now. Live from Acadiana, your local news leader, this is Paz Patu. Good morning, Acadiana, and welcome into Paz Patu, 6.30 on your Thursday morning. I know we talked a little bit about it earlier, but Caroline, yesterday, Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser announced the 11 competitors who will be competing in the Louisiana Seafood Kickoff. That's June 22nd here at the Cajun Dome in Lafayette. I know you got to go two years ago. I know seeing some of the video is really cool. And who doesn't, of course, love seafood? Oh, always such a fun event. Yes, Megan and Megan Kelly and I went, and we really we went for the food, but we went to see Gerald <laughs> Grunig as well. He was uh, hosting um, the cook-off, which is so fun to watch every year. So I know Gerald is excited it's coming back, and we're going to have to get some tickets again this year. We are. <laughs> Chris, you want to tag along? Absolutely, as long as you're inviting me, that's for sure. Live down for 10 this morning. We're seeing some heavier downpours, but all that is really lifting off to the north. Noticing some development that's happening just south. So it looks like uh, Pine Prairie, Turkey Creek, those areas may get some heavier rains there. But really, this batch of showers and thunderstorms continues to lift northward into more of Brad Pete's Parish. It's just the, the monster that we have going on with these scattered storms. It's just impossible to be accurate on exactly where they're going to develop and where they're going to move over. So, chance of rain today. Back into that scattered to probable category, and more of the same again for tomorrow and end of the weekend into next week. Of course, we'll look at all that in the full forecast. That will be later on Paspa, too. A survivor of the Sea Corps power disaster is sharing the most detailed account yet of what happened on board the sinking ship. 19 men were aboard the lift boat April 13th when it capsized. Six people were rescued, six were killed, and seven remain missing. News 10's Neil Zarang shares what new details the latest lawsuit reveals. Dwayne Lewis remembers jumping out of bed when the C-Corp hour began to roll from its front to its back. The ceiling and floor became walls as one wall became the floor beneath him. As he looked out his third deck window, his nap had ended and his real-life nightmare began. According to Lewis's lawsuit, when he first arrived at the Bowlinger shipyard where the C-Corp hour was docked, an orientation meeting left out information he could have used. Locations of emergency exits were not discussed and life jackets were described briefly as outside in boxes at a midship location. Thankfully, whoever was staying across the hall climbed into Lewis his room and determined their escape was the window. When it refused to budge, both men took turns using a nearby fire extinguisher to shatter the glass. They donned life jackets, and Lewis remembered hearing, We need to get out of here, here before his companion left through the window. Waves feet below the window pushed water into Lewis's room, but the last thing he wanted to do was jump into the gulf. When he was a child, his brother drowned, and Lewis's parents kept him from the water. He couldn't swim, and though he stayed as long as he could, getting tossed around the room when the water reached his window, Lewis seized the courage he needed and was sucked outside by a wave. He thought, Oh my God, what in the hell is going on here? Hanging on to a rope, Lewis saw four or five other men. He couldn't make out who over the 10 to 12 foot splashing waves, but he heard them hollering before his grip slipped. Lewis drifted for three and a half hours before the crew of the Mr. Lloyd rescued him. Lewis's lawsuit says he fears he will never be able to work offshore again. He's suing the boat manufacturer, owner, and charter for what happened. The families of Acadiana natives Dylan Daspit, Jay Guevara, Ernest Williams, and Brian Myers have also filed lawsuits. Outside of Acadiana, three additional families, including the boat captains, have filed. Lafayette police have a suspect in custody in connection with the May 19th shooting death of Robert Bear. A warrant for 28-year-old Naki Sidnagal was issued in the May 19th murder, officers responded to the scene around 9 o'clock a.m. Authorities say Senegal did not comply when they urged him to come out of the house. Senegal was later arrested and will face a charge of second degree murder. The Lafayette Police SWAT team was deployed to the 1800 block of ERAS Landry Road in reference to the apprehension of a wanted suspect. He will be charged with one count of second degree murder. Uh, 
officers responded. He did respond by exiting the residence, so there were no incidents after uh, he was apprehended. The deadly shooting happened on May 19th on East Simcoe Street. Senegal is accused of shooting and killing 43-year-old Robert Hebert of Lafayette. The man who police say vandalized the Lafayette sign painted in June in honor of the LGBTQ community has been arrested and charged with simple criminal damage to property. The letters are painted throughout the year for different events, groups, and causes, recently in honor of Pride Month. However, just a day before Pride Month began, the sign was vandalized. Police say Zachary Kennard was arrested and booked on a $5,000 bond. State lawmakers have unanimously voted to toughen rules for how colleges must respond to claims of sexual assault on campus. But now both chambers will have to agree on a final approach. Two identical measures are being debated in the House and Senate. They all stem from LSU's alleged Title IX scandal just uncovered months ago. The proposals would require colleges to fire employees who fail to report sexual misconduct claims. It would also add new training requirements for employees. Lawmakers are expected to decide on which bill they will send to the governor's desk before the session ends next Thursday. A bill to expand medical marijuana use is headed to the governor's desk. On Wednesday, lawmakers passed a bill with a vote of 76 to 17. The bill would offer raw, smokable marijuana to its patients to help alleviate their medical conditions in an effort to give residents cheaper options. Governor Edwards has signaled that he will sign the bill into law. On Wednesday, Governor John Bell Edwards spoke as advocates of early childhood education pushed for lawmakers to help the struggling industry. Governor Edwards joined the state superintendent and other leaders at the third annual Early Education Day at the state capitol. There was a push from supporters to increase funding and improve policies to help an industry hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. The governor says despite a setback this year, the future appears bright. I'm actually optimistic about the future as it relates to early childhood education. Uh, somewhat disappointed this year because we, we did ask for a, a what I thought was a very reasonable and modest uh, amount. Um, but we will redouble our efforts, and I know that you all uh, will too. Earlier in the session, legislators rejected the governor's request for a $6 million investment in early education to expand access to the program in Louisiana. President Biden has approved the governor's emergency declaration request in response to the impacts of the severe weather last month. Lafayette Parish was one of those included in the declaration. This means the state will now have access to direct federal assistance in addition to local response efforts. The Department of Homeland Security and FEMA will coordinate all disaster relief efforts to provide mass shelters and care. Hurricane season is here, and we want to make sure you are prepared when a storm strikes. Join us at 6.30 Friday night for our KLFY hurricane special, Eye on Storms. We will have an outlook of this year's season and look back at the activity in the tropics last year. We'll also hear from the National Hurricane Center and give advice on protecting your property. You're taking a live look at the intersection of I-10 and Ambassador Caffrey. No traffic incidents to report at this time. It's now 6.38 on your Thursday morning. A crab cake sandwich on Acadiana Eats with a Caesar side salad. Look out, man. That's right up my alley. Much more coming up in a few minutes on Fox Spot 2. You can join News 10 online. Go to our website at klfy.com.